Tena est alone greetings. This is Ras Yadinos, this is Ras Iadonis, a lion of Jewish society. And here, I don't know if you caught this, I didn't even really catch it. It kind of came across the story and was asked for my opinion on it. And um, it's an interesting story. I, you know, I looked at it and um, basically, let me give you an overview. It's uh, Big Brother Africa. Yep, you heard it. Big Brother Africa. You know, like the Big Brother shows over here in um, America, you know, CBS and all of that. But they have Big, Big Brother Africa. And there's been this uh, controversy and controversy concerning um, Ethiopian uh, Betty. They call her Ethiopian Betty the Ethiopian contestant uh, Betty Abra, who is who was I, I don't know if this is still going on. This story basically was taking place uh, last year in 2013. This article here is dated uh, July 3rd, 2013, and there's been a whole lot of um, evil words. I mean, some really evil words. It's interesting what a um, what a big mountain you know, can be made out of something like this right here. And I'm kind of happy I didn't really know about this and just kept to whatever I was doing. But it's good that I got to know about this. I want to check this check this uh, story out, really share the story with you, and hopefully you'll check this out, brothers and sisters. But I wanted to do a video, actually, after basically getting a good um, digestion of this story, not the indigestion, because a lot of folks... A lot of Ethi this really shows something about the careless Ethiopian. When we talk about the careless Ethiopians, I mean, how they are condemning and how many have condemned, I mean, some vicious and savage and some evil words spoken about this. Uh, I think she's like 26 years old. Now, the moral issue, you know, the, there is a moral issue here, but you got to really wake up and look what kind of world we're in and how... Um, both us and them, how we all have got into this particular point in time. But the condemnation against Betty Abra, she's being called all sort of names and has been called all sort of names because she allegedly, not allegedly, she did. You see it on video. It's basically on um, what they call it, the infrared camera. You know, like they do on um, uh, Big Brother, the show out here in the West. They have a Big Brother Africa. Now, she's being sued for sex in public. Now, according to Aramba Times, Addis Ababa, there was a group of lawyers, because we have to follow up on this, just kind of out of curiosity as to what has happened in this particular case uh, since last year. But a group of lawyers in Addis Ababa, they finalized preparations to sue Big Brother Africa. Africa's 2013 contestant, um, the Ethiopian Betty Abra, for now get this, you really have to understand how this, you got to get the context of this, having sex in public. Now, according to a local radio show, Ethiopic um, Link, um, if she is convicted, Betty could potentially face up to six years behind bars in Ethiopia. Now, what's interesting about this show, this show is kind of it's kind of a trans-African show with Africans from all different parts of Africa, like the Big Brother show in the West here in America, you know, living together and having arguments and ups and downs. And of course, occasionally sex or something, you know, sexual tension or, in this case, actual sex. Now, now remember, the sex, well, one of, one particular one was recorded on, uh, there's a there's a video up on um, Super Habisha Girl or something like that, um, Betty and Bolt. Now, this, uh, this African uh, dude you see right here, he's from, he's from uh, Sierra Leone. Now, we first really found out about this. We picked up on this um, while doing some research on another um, East African um, actress or something like that. Her name is Zawdi Araya. Some of y'all might know her from the Il Corpro and the the Body um, and some of the Italian uh, the 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 spaghetti the spaghetti uh, Italian kind of movies and everything. She's from Eritrea, this other Zaudi um, 
Raya. Now, I think there's a very there's a there's, you know we could go a lot of different directions with this particular um, this particular story here. It, it's very interesting for many many reasons. But first and foremost, as a as as a Rastafari in the light of the true Christ, we have I'm, I personally have to come in defense of uh, Betty, not for her. It's like the woman caught in adultery. Right, but Minzar Yetayaya Zetu Sate. Now here, be be beifa, you know, be beifa sex madre Yetayaya Zetu Sate. Now she's on this particular show, and and uh, you got to check out the show on your own. There's some clips up there, so forth and so on. But there's a deeper, you know, this this brings to light um, the. The deeper uh, falling away and falling from grace of Ethiopia and Ethiopians, right, at at home, as well as Ethiopians abroad. Now, Ethiopia's Betty and Sierra Leone's both, they became the first couple to engage in a sex act in 2013's Big Brother Africa. Ooh, sex act. But you know what it's really about? It's really about um, blackness. That's what it's really about. It's really about blackness. Because if you go on some of the Ethiopian blogs, some of them are there. Some some you have to have a little bit of uh, chilota, you know, ability in the Amharic and in their transcription to really understand what they're saying, even though the, the, a lot of them are very insane. I mean, the hatred that's being thrown at this particular um, young Ethiopian here for something that morally there is a point there, you know, but it goes beyond the fact that she just had sex, but it's who she had sex with, you know, because we've been seeing a lot of kind of movies where Ethiopian and African and black women having sex with white guys and these kind of um, European Africa kind of romance, kind of crazy flicks and everything, you know, which is part of the white man, the European's fantasy. But when the European fantasizes about having sex with Ethiopian and black woman, for the careless Ethiopians, it seems like a step up. You know what I mean? But here, she had sex with a West African whom some Ethiopians deride as Bantu and publicly. You understand all these on publicly was publicized. Even these lawyers right here is interesting that they're suing um they're suing what we could even term as a kind of a victim because she's tw- she don't she don't even really comprehend. She's she's actually the product of apostate Ethiopia. In other words, Ethiopians are looking at what they produced. Right? And then they're saying, Well, she don't represent Ethiopia, she don't represent Ethiopia. Oh, really now? Right? Who's to blame, huh? Blame Hala Selassie first. That's what they've been used to basically doing. But the social media, such as the Facebook pages and including radio hosts in Ethiopia, have been tirelessly, and the key word right here is condemning Betty's very open hookup on live television. Nothing about condemning Big Brother Africa. Nothing about condemning the show, which could have filmed it and might have been able to tastefully you know, basically let people know, okay, these, these, these guys right here, this, this Ethiopian girl and this Ethiopian boy, you know, man and woman, male and female, they had sex, you know, but they put it out there and it's part of the whole Babylon hype and they condemn the woman, but really deep down inside, they condemn the idea that an Ethiopian woman had sex with someone they can t- consider a Bantu man. Now, this is part of what really, um, you know, okay, you know, yeah, all right, you know, that, 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 that's part of it right there. There's, there's more on that, but what, we, what we're going to do is kind of pause for the cause because we wanted to get into this particular subject matter, but um, we'll go a little bit deeper in defense of Ethiopian Betty. Right, um, and this is not a personal defense. It's basically a, a Christian defense because it seemed like a lot of Ethiopians got the wrong gospel. Well, after all, you look at it now. Nowadays, Ethiopians have a white Jesus and a white Mary. That never was before, 
when Ethiopia had honor, right? But Ethiopia is a pie state that has produced, you know, some bad fruit. And instead of condemning those who, who pushed out the rightful owner of the vineyard and condemning themselves, you know, they condemn the girls and the boys and those who fall between the crack that they have made in their apostasy against the king of kings. So we're going to deal with this a little bit more as we go forward, brothers and sisters. Um, Ethiopian Betty in defense of Ethiopian Betty, right? I mean, they just hate to see this right here. That an Ethiopian woman, basically a black man and a black woman. But some Ethiopians got the wrong idea of what it is to be Ethiopian. They forgot that the term Ethiopian refers actually to African. So really, there's nothing wrong that is going on here in principle. But something has already gone wrong and they don't recognize the prophecy of it. So anyway, my brothers and sisters, you know, this is what they really fear right here. You know what I mean? What they fear right here. And the true Christ, you know, wouldn't condemn her the way they condemned her, right? And the way they continue to condemn her. I mean, even threatening that if she comes back to Ethiopia, that almost she deserves to die. And, and then you wonder, right? Then some of y'all wonder why I and I as Rastafari say if they don't recognize his imperial majesty in his palace in Ethiopia, if they don't recognize, if they couldn't recognize that, what should happen to such a people, such careless sheeple?